This story is absolutely insane. So if you paid $150 for the most expensive edition of a game with the promise that you would then receive all DLC going forward, would you be happy if a new $250 more expensive version of the game in fact existed and then denied you an entire game mode? That's just the tip of the iceberg with Tarkov's latest outrage. Players are wailing against pay to win mechanics, broken promises, and a developer that seems out of touch with community expectations. What's good though is the dust has settled after a weekend of chaos, of developer responses, backpedaling, theories. So what we're able to do today is bring all of the facts of the story into one place, which we can only do thanks to the support of today's sponsor. Who I recently have used to save hundreds of pounds. Like, yeah, legit. Recently, I found out I was being charged for things like Microsoft 365 Family, which I do not use. Rocket Money, thankfully, though, is here to help. It's a personal finance tool that helps you lower your bills, stay on top of subscriptions, and manage your money, and you can get started for free today at rocketmoney.com forward slash bellular. So, for subscriptions, it's one of the great things they do. Rocket Money will securely and safely identify recurring charges for you, and once it's done that, it just lets you cancel them with a tap. It is so easy and fast. So if cleaning up your subs has been on your to-do list, Rocket Money is an awesome tool to let you do that quickly. But they also tackle bills. If you want your bills to be lower, but you don't want to spend your life listening to hold music on the company's phone line, you can actually upload your bills to Rocket Money and they will negotiate them down for you. They do more as well, of course. They help you budget. And so far, they've saved their customers up to $740 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. That's personally awesome. And like, that's 500 million bucks that people didn't want to spend that they're now not spending. So I think that's a great mission. So if you also want to save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members with them using Rocket Money today at rocketmoney.com forward slash bellular, or just click the link in the description to get started for free. And if you want to unlock more features, you can do so with premium. It's rocketmoney.com forward slash bellular to get started for free. With that said, Oh boy, let's go talk about the news. When is a DLC not a DLC? That is basically the question the Battlestate games are being asked by their players, because really this makes absolutely no sense. Now, just as a reminder here, Escape from Tarkov, it launched in 2017 as a part of a closed beta, and technically it is still in that beta today. Now, Battlestate are generating revenue by selling copies of the game, but then also by upselling different editions of the game. The problem for them, though, is that late last week, they updated those additions, and that is what began just days of fury from the community. So, the unheard edition costs $250. Here's what it's got. Guaranteed instant access to the closed beta, digital copy preload access to PvE co-op mode with persistent progression, progression will not reset with wipes, enhanced stash size, unique in-game ID, expanded BMC pockets, increased fence standing, more slots, on the flea market, unique in-game melee weapon, there's a lot, um, increased mail retention time, additional background screen options, free access to all subsequent DLCs, access to the early test server, additional equipment and resource stash. That was a uh, quite a long list to read off. By comparison then, the most expensive previous edition was the Edge of Darkness edition. Now this was $150, and I do have to go through what's contained in it. I know it's a lot of details and items and things, but it is actually relevant to the story because this is more than just the PvE mode. So it came with free access to Escape from Tarkov Arena, guaranteed instant access to the closed beta, digital copy preload, a stash size of 10x68, which is smaller than what the previous one had, the new most expensive edition is 10x72, so that's actually a pretty damn big difference. And um, It also has got additional equipment and resources in the stash, initial good standing with all in-game traders, unique in-game ID, free access to all subsequent DLCs. So that's what's up in terms of player benefits. The 150 buck version is no longer there for sale. And comparing these, you can see more than a few similarities, but also the key differences. The $250 version is massively upping the benefits the players are getting. And to be honest, for a lot of people, this is skirting on pay to win because of like the additional stash benefits, um, just more useful things, right? Like it does seem like just a bit too much, like it's kind of crossing the line. Um, so that does of course mean that there is then an incentive for players to buy the game over again. Now that's already a problem when people who had already bought the most expensive edition then feel really shortchanged because hey, now there's another edition and look at all the things that it has got. Can I have more money, please, says the company. But 
But the biggest problem was not the pay to win bonuses that could be gamed out. It was this PVE co-op mode. So basically, right, the PVE co-op allows people to just play the game with their friends and I suppose just have a more sedate version, right? A little bit less crazy. Maybe you don't like the PVP aspect. Maybe you'd enjoy that fantasy, but PVE more. I think that is the case for a lot of people. And that is going to be super appealing to a lot of people who either have just been lapsed for the game or maybe who would think that this is something that would make the game approachable to them, right? So this has been asked for for a very long time. A lot of people have wanted it. And it's also notable because progress would never be wiped, right? That is, a, that is an important thing. You can obviously see why this is something people would love. And the idea then that you have got to uh, buy the Unheard Edition, $250 to access a game mode, that does seem completely insane insofar as how we actually buy games normally. And when I see this, I almost see it as if, say, the Star Citizen developer said, hey, if you buy the $500 uh, ship package, we'll give you access to, to this thing that you can do. And they'd be framing it all as a, you know, oh, support the development of the game. And I think ostensibly that's what they're trying to get away with here. But the thing is, I mean, yeah, technically it's a beta. Technically Tarkov isn't out yet, but I mean, it's a game that people have been playing absolutely for years. Next, then they said this on Twitter. PVE mode is a unique feature, which is available only to owners of the Unheard Edition. We will keep you updated on new features exclusive for EOD owners. That is the previous, like most expensive edition of the game. So they said that, and uh, I don't want to shock you, everyone, but it didn't go particularly well. And what's odd here is that they, they describe this as a feature. Now, to a lot of people, a new feature coming into a game, perhaps, right, perhaps in the form of some sort of download that you might do, a lot of people would call that a downloadable piece of content. So Tarkov are essentially trying to say that this is a feature, not content, which is insane. That's completely mad, and uh, absolutely nobody would buy that, and very obviously, they did not buy that. Now, this is coming in a game that already has a community that gets frustrated with the state of the game, including the fact that it is still not technically out there. As well, the developers have been perceived to be kind of anti-community for things that we've covered before in the channel, like data mining bans. Very much people just data mining and the developers being very very angry at the data mining going on. This obviously means that the audience, while they love playing Tarkov, they do not have a strong relationship of trust with the developer. And that obviously led to outrage. Outrage that I think is completely justified because this is an absolutely insane thing. The idea that somebody is spending 150 bucks for the, you know, the most expensive version of your game and uh, you then essentially screw them over with something like this. That is insane. And uh, well, things were also interesting on the official Discord in particular because it became unusable. The mods basically had to let users riot rather than lock down posting. If you imagine, right, on the Discord front, there's two things you can do. Either shut down the thing that everyone is talking about or just say, you know what, screw it. We literally, we, we cannot moderate this Discord without our moderation of of the Discord itself becoming a new chapter in a terrible story. So I think that actually letting the Discord kind of go riot, I think that was the right move actually. Now, all of this, uh, this anger then led to a sort of process of climb downs coming from the devs. So first up, the COO, that's the chief operations officer, detailed in Reddit that there will be new updates for existing EOD owners. Again, that's the prior 150 buck version to make sure that they did not feel shortchanged, where they'll get their own unique cosmetics, new abilities, not like the increased trader buying limits and higher priority matchmaking for six months, so that they basically would have their own distinct uh, valuable pay to win-ish element, which I'm, I mean, if, if you're supporting a game like this with that amount of money, I think the idea that your support is going into it, turning pay to win, I think for a lot of people, that'll actually feel gross and make them absolutely not want to reward that behavior. And then the final thing is they'd be given six months of access to the offline PVE mode. So this was a step that addressed the core issue that the EOD players were feeling shortchanged, but of course, without dealing with the detail of the issue, the fact that the EOD players felt like they were being denied something where they want the PVE mode that they believe they've already paid for. Because when 
when you buy something that says you get all future DLC and then the dev slides in and says, sorry, by the way, features aren't content. How do you, how do you claim that features aren't content? That is mad. Uh, it's insane. Um, this of course also didn't help because EOD players, they would retroactively have paid for pay to win elements like the higher priority matchmaking and things like that, which is then just its own ethical nightmare for a lot of those players to deal with. At the time though, we began to see, to understand how the Tarkov CEO was beginning to explain all of this from their internal perspective. And I mean, that's where it gets interesting. Certainly not better, but at least interesting. They say, temporary access to PvE will be provided as soon as we reinforce our server infrastructure of that particular game mode for a wider audience because we use totally different servers for that and there is a really limited amount of them. And then what followed was a second climb down and this is what they explained. First of all, PvE game mode is not DLC. DLC in our understanding is major additions to the game, including various functionality and content that are released after the official release of the game as themed DLC packs. They give an example, the Scav Life DLC, which will add a lot of new gameplay mechanics and content for Scav gameplay and leveling. They say, secondly then, this specific functionality of PvE mode is necessarily located entirely in a separate network infrastructure because essentially you play on our servers only in closed mode. At this stage, it is not possible to launch all players who are EOD holders. Right now, we simply do not have the required resources to do this. And then they added that PVE will now be free for all EOD, that's the $150 pack, owners at the full release of the game when the servers are capable and that EOD owners will be able to upgrade to the Unheard Edition for 50% off. Then that one copy of the Left Behind Edition would be given to all current EOD owners, which would basically add many like stash items and an increased stash size. And then they'd consider giving everyone the chance to purchase early access to PVE with EOD owners getting a 70% discount on that cost. So basically this is this is kind of like saying, hello, you have purchased money to come into our Tarkov theme park. We're going to open a new world in our theme park, which is PVE, but your regular ticket doesn't get you in there. And here is a complicated set of ways that you can then upcharge yourself. Uh, I mean, imagine if Universal did that for say like the Harry Potter land, whenever that came out. I don't know if people would be angry. They probably would be, but hey, whatever, it's theme parks. That's uh, where we all just sort of agree we go to get utterly reamed. Anyhow, they also then say a balance pass will happen on the Unheard Edition pay to win items to make sure they're more fair, which uh, I mean, there you go. Lovely. I'm sure that is everybody's concerns uh, dealt with and the community is happy. It's obviously not uh, because again, we can immediately see problems here. Number one, it's still asking people to pay for a PVE mode in one way or another, or to basically put up with only six months of access before launch. Then they attempt to buy off those very same players with stash uh, items and space. And from the player perspective, it's trying to tell them that they're wrong about what they think a DLC is, right? That, that a feature and a DLC, that those are different things. They're trying to talk about all of this in terms of an internal project, their own resources, servers, and all of that stuff. And really design-wise, this feels very similar to Tarkov Arena, right? And with Tarkov Arena, the EOD people, they were given free access to it, um, where, you know, they're, they're basically framing Tarkov Arena as an entirely separate purchasable product from Tarkov itself, and both are listed separately from the season pass in the list of both editions. But of course, the difference here from the player perspective is that PvE isn't a new game mode with additions to gameplay like Arena is. Because Escape from Tarkov Arena is basically taking how Tarkov plays and giving you a faster paced, lower stakes, like Arena PvP shooter, right? So that does feel a bit more different. Whereas PvE is basically Tarkov, but removing the online opponents from the core game and then keeping the rest, right? Uh, of course, a player doesn't care that it's an entirely different server infrastructure to make that happen. That's, that's a detail. That's the developer's problem. Ultimately, it's the thing they already like, but with PvE instead of PvP. Obviously, this did not go well, and that led to the third message and the final state of the climb down the battle state have performed. They say, first of all, I would like to say that we are very sorry to fans and the game community in general who are experiencing these feelings. 
Yes, experiencing those feelings. Unfortunately, I somehow did not foresee the fact of such a reaction, and I have now drawn conclusions for my first decisions. That is absolutely hilarious. It's like, unfortunately, I did not see the absolutely blindingly obvious. It's your responsibility. You're a chief something officer, right? Like, come on. Now, this feels like a non-apology. That said, I do have to put a pin in this and say that English is not the first language of this studio, so... You know, I'm, I am going to give a bit of benefit of the doubt there, even though, like, obviously, I think their decisions here are really, really bad. But there's a little bit of explaining on that later. Anyway, they basically say that this is what's going to happen, that there will be access in waves to PvE for EOD owners for free going forwards as that server capacity is built up, that mod support will be added to PvE post-launch, that the Unheard Edition will still be sold, but the perks and items will be balanced, and those who have already bought it will get more rewards to justify the, I suppose, the player power part of their purchase being watered down. They say that prioritized matchmaking will be removed from the EOD upgrades, but there will be more unique benefits to be detailed later, and that the game otherwise will just continue to be worked on, where they say, thanks for your time, love and hate, thank you for your uh, increased attention to the current situation. So, is this a win? Well, PvE is still paid access, it's just uh, now open to the existing EOD pack owners eventually. The PvE changes are basically all rooted in the server upgrades, and that kind of suggests that the Unheard Edition wasn't expected to sell that much anyway, perhaps, otherwise maybe people wouldn't have been able to play either that, or they just thought like, well, this is how much server capacity we have at $250 a pop, this will meet our financial goals, and then that's maybe why they proceed with that plan. The pay-to-win elements being toned down is good, but we don't know what that looks like, and frankly, I think the existence of them is itself a massive problem, and uh, a lot of these improvements are based on Tarkov actually launching, which will happen at some point. I guess. The community is still really pissed off because fundamentally they don't trust Battlestate at all, right? And the people who never trusted Battlestate, they are being proven right. And now there are a lot of theories running rampant that Tarkov Arena has failed and that this is some sort of exit scam to get a final surge of cash before abandoning projects and things like that. Uh, but right now it does seem that they mostly wanted to just get more money from their dedicated audience who absolutely would pay 250 bucks for those features because they already paid 150 bucks up to this point, right? Now, the I, I think the, the final thing to end this video on, a while ago I was browsing YouTube and going through some Tarkov stuff, right? Like just in my own downtime. And I watched a video about Arena, okay? And it was about just general suspicions with Arena, how for quite a few people, I thought that maybe Arena would be healthy for the overall ecosystem of Tarkov. As an example, right, I am not a Tarkov player, and I do think that Arena would be well positioned to somebody like me because it would be really good to be able to train up the core, just like mastery of its shooting mechanics like first in the arena before going into the kind of big grown-up game mode. The thing is, though, in that video, um, they were essentially going through financial statements, and it really did seem like the developers like Battlestate were spending a lot of money. It's a video, it was going through their, like, their booths, how incredibly expensive their booths were at major conventions, things like that. And uh, I, I think that video was basically just calling into question some of the company's finances and, uh, well, that they were maybe spending too much money. And I suppose in that context, and with that being a fairly common thought and concern within the community, this then does take on a little bit more meaning as well. So it's a tricky situation. I mean, maybe they have not cost controlled as much as they should have. I mean, maybe they got massive surges of money because of Tarkov's immense success, but maybe they just weren't disciplined in that. I don't exactly know, um, that's maybe a further investigation we will have to do, but ultimately I do think that this is one of the most insane stories of the year. It is so needless. I mean, you go to the indies for disruption, you know, disruption to well, just why people feel underserved by AAA, and along with that comes an expectation that scummy things won't be done. This goes beyond what any AAA would normally do, right? I mean, paying for advanced access is like five days. 
th this is altogether different. And Battlestate would say that this is different because these are perhaps pledges to fund the development of the game. And really, this is just one big extended crowdfunding campaign, like how a lot of people would see Star Citizen. Of course, a lot of people see Star Citizen that way, and that makes a lot of other people very skeptical. So overall, I mean, this is just one of the, the biggest, most stupid L's that I think I've seen. If they fundamentally believe that Tarkov PvE is really good, then why is there not a way, well, to not do it like this? You know, if, if you only have limited slots, you can do it as a beta and, um, you know, drum up interest, drum up excitement do it in a far less monetized way and eventually just have Tarkov PVE be good to the point where you really think it's a compelling part of your product. That That's what you would normally do instead of something that feels like such a blatant cash grab. But I think the concern then for a lot of people will be, well, what motivated them to do it this way? Is it existential? A lot of players will, I think, lose uh, confidence. I mean, Confidence is being lost anyway, but I think in different ways. To some people, they will lose confidence in the developer's judgment and think that the developers are greedy and money-grubbing. For some other people, though, they will see that and think, okay, I get how it could look greedy and I get how it could very look money-grabbing. However, is it some sort of dire situation that has led to them feeling like they have to do that? And then those people will think, oh dear, I now do not have faith in the long-term sustainability of this company because why do they have to be so desperate? So either way, I think this, it's a massive loss and it injects a massive amount of existential fear into this game's player base. And that's unfortunate because it really doesn't seem like it needs to go this way. Like it's Tarkov, that's a successful game. Oh, let me know what you think anyway, but that's it for today's video. Of course, thanks to you for watching. Thanks to today's sponsor for supporting the show. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow.